happy, happy Friday, everyone. <laughs> so sorry about that. It's Dr. Bridget Young from babyformulaexpert.com here for happy hour to talk about Enfamil's new formulas, new formulas. Uh, the kids are being allowed 30 minutes of screen time so I can get through this. They're watching the Cars movie, so no parents perfect. <laughs> anyway, so we got to wrap this up in 30 minutes. So if you hear their voices or tomato in the background, you know what's going on. Um, I'm Dr. Bridget Young. I'm a doctor of perinatal nutrition and a certified lactation counselor and founder of babyformulaexpert.com. Uh, today on Happy Hour, we are going to be talking about Enfamil's new look. And they, so they just released a new label and a sort of new look to some of their formulas. Uh, and along with that is the branding of premium on some of their formulas. So I have kind of poured through the ingredients and I'm going to give you my take on what is different about these formulas and a little bit of the biology of why this matters or not. So this Friday, I, I am having a cocktail. That was a lovely way to get started um, here are my notes. So Enfamil, you may or may not see this in your store yet, it's definitely on Amazon. Enfamil just released a premium version of their Enfamil Infant, the yellow, Enfamil Gentilese, and Enfamil Newborn. So the new label says premium on it and it doesn't have the little cute owl. So they're going through a rebranding. And I have no relationship with formula companies, so I hope I report all this correctly, but my impression is Every time you see a formula company go through a rebrand, usually it's accompanied by a subtle change in recipe. Now, if it's a big change in recipe, hopefully they would make some kind of press announcement because if you're feeding your baby one, you would want to know. Uh, that's not the case here. Uh, it's a subtle change, but there is a difference. And so um, I spent a lot of time on the Enfamil website. Their website for medical professionals is not updated yet, which... I really wish they would get on that. So they've released this new formula and it's not even on their website for medical professionals. So I had to do a little bit of digging um, and just go with what is on their standard website. And basically the difference, this is what it boils down to. So for Enfamil Infant, Enfamil Gentilese, and Enfamil Newborn, as far as I can tell, the only difference between the original formula and the premium that is on the shelves now is that the new version the premium has four times as much inositol as the original version. Yes, you heard me, inositol. I'm sure you're like, what the F is inositol? Why is it even in formula? Well, I will give you a quick five minute background about what inositol is, why it's in formula, and then, um, and then you can make a decision about is more or less important to you, which is basically what you need to decide if you're deciding between premium versus their original. So I'm going to go out on a limb and say I think I know more about breast milk composition than probably 99.9% .9 of people on earth. And I knew inositol was in breast milk, but honestly, I really didn't know much about it. I couldn't have told you like for real what it was and why it was exactly in formula or breast milk. It's just one of those things that um, we haven't studied that much. It's kind of, uh, I don't know. You okay? Lon's well, joking. Oh, he's good. Um, the things that is not considered one of these major, major issues, like, you know, when we decided to add iron to formula because babies were becoming anemic and dying, like, not like that. So, <laughs> he did, honey. So, here's what inositol is. Quick definition for you fellow uh, organic chemistry or bio nerds, inositol is actually a sugar alcohol. Technically, it is roughly half as sweet as sugar. Now the levels in formula are so low, it's not contributing to the taste profile of formula. Um, but uh, it chemically looks similar-ish to glucose in that it's a six carbon chain and inositol actually has an OH moiety and alcohol moiety on every single carbon. So the structure is this very symmetrical looking soccer ball shape with all these alcohols coming off the edge. If you don't know what that means, you don't need to know. It's fine. Here's what um, the kicker about inositol. It actually is very critical to biology. It plays a lot of roles as secondary messengers to a lot of different cellular functions. It also plays a lot of stru structural roles because it can be incorporated into several larger molecules, um, a lot of which have phosphate attached, 
phosphatidyl inositol may be something you have heard about in your molecular biology exams. Um, inositol is the base of that. And it actually, I've got notes here because I had to brush up on this stuff. Um, so inositol itself as a, mes a messenger molecule and also as a structural molecule plays a role in a slew of very important biological functions for life, like insulin signaling, cyto cytoskeleton assembly. I'm not going to read all these. Breakdown of fats, general uh, gene expression, so like real important things. The reason that you don't hear about it a lot, like you hear about iron or zinc, is inositol technically isn't an essential nutrient, and that's because your body, oh, here comes Vaughn, and he's so dirty. Oh, boy, Vaughn. Um, you're filthy, because inositol, your body can generate inositol from glucose. Thank you very, thank you very much. You're all done. Like I said, it's very similar to glucose. Let me do a quick wipe off here. Oh, boy. Um, so your body is capable of making it, which is why it technically is not a nutrient. Okay. Fun fact is that a long time ago, it was considered a vitamin. It was vitamin B8, but it is no longer considered a vitamin because, again, your body can make it. And vitamins and minerals are technically something that you need to obtain from your diet in order to support life. So, are you showing everyone how dirty you are? <laughs> yeah. So, so that's what inositol is. The reason that we add it to oh, we've got yogurt all over me. The reason we add it to formula. Are you just showing off? <laughs> is that, yeah, honey, I'm sorry for all the distractions. The reason we add it to formula is because there's a lot of inositol in breast milk. So, Here's the thing, even though your body is capable of making it, evolutionarily, the human race decided like, well, newborn babies really should be getting more inositol from their diet. Maybe they're not capable of making it as quickly as we would like when they're so little and they probably need so much because they're doing so much growing. That is too loud, thank you. So it's really high in colostrum and then decreases over the first four days of lactation and then hits kind of a minimal plateau where it remains constant inositol in breast milk. Um, and there's the, most of the research about inositol in human milk is in premature infants. And we've got really great research to suggest that infants born prematurely really should be supplemented with inositol. It improves a lot of outcomes. It prevents retinopathy, uh, which is all kinds of terrible eye outcomes, and lung disease and a lot of um, lung damage and disease-related damage that premature infants are especially susceptible to. So without a doubt, premature infants have needs for inositol and their body is not capable of making as much as they need. There's a lot less, slash really hardly any, in term infants. It seems like uh, it's in breast milk, so we should probably give it to them, but it's not so cut and dry like it prevents all these horrible things. That being said, um, inositol is one of the 29 ingredients required by the FDA for infant formulas, specifically for non-milk-based formulas, because cow's milk actually has some inositol in it. Petey, thank you, honey. That was very helpful. So... Um, so all formulas have to have inositol. And I'm actually going to read you word for word a statement from the FDA about inositol in general and why it's in formula. Because um, I think it, it really does a great summary of kind of our lack of understanding about exactly how good inositol may be for a healthy term baby, but why we add it to formula anyway. So this is directly from the FDA. The high inositol concentration of human milk and the relatively low concentration in cow's milk together with inadequate understanding of inositol metabolism and utilization during the neonatal development in animals and man, translation like, eh, there's a lot in breast milk, but we don't really know what it does, suggests the possibility that basic infant formulas, particularly milk-free preparations, which would be soy, may contain less inositol than necessary for optimal growth and development. So the rationale for adding inositol to certain infant formulas is based on an assumption that the greater intake ensures against a possible deficiency of inositol during early growth and development when the needs for dietary sources of inositol may be maximal, which makes sense. You know, you, the fastest you're ever growing is when you're a newborn, so that makes sense when you would have really high dietary need for inositol. That was a lot of long-winded biology to explain to you why inositol is in formula and what Enfamil has done with their new premium formulas is they've just 4x'd the amount of inositol that they have previously added 
to the formula. So like I said, the FDA requires it. The FDA just um, sets a minimum. So formulas have to have four milligrams per 100 calories of inositol. And previously, all of Enfamil's formulas had six milligrams per 100 calories. And now their new premium, which comes in infant, their standard infant, newborn, and gentle release, have 24 milligrams per 100 calories. So that's a lot more. All of that is in, within the range of breast milk. So if you study breast milk, um, you know that there's a huge variety in most of the nutrients in breast milk and of what is normal. And it's really hard to look at an individual nutrient like inositol and say, this is how much formula fed babies should have because there's such a range in breast milk and breast milk all comes together as one thing. It's not like it's just an inositol supplement. It's full of all kinds of other things. But we have to start somewhere and do our best for formula fed babies. So breast milk is what we're trying to emulate. So Enfamil reports on their website, and I think I cannot find the study this comes from, so it's probably an internal study that they've conducted, that the average concentration of mature human milk is roughly 22 milligrams of inositol per 100 cows. I did find a, a few other studies, um, a much small studies of inositol in breast milk. Vaughn, no thank you. Kamikaze over there. Um, and the average is really similar in these studies to what Enfamil reports. So I've done the maths, it's about 20, but the range is huge. So some moms have milk as low as eight, some moms have milk as high as 30. So again, it's really hard to say this exact concentration is the best, which is why you have a lot of different formula companies making different decisions basically about how much is best. So. Here's what you need to know. I'll get, so we already went over. So inositol in all of Enfamil's original formulas is six milligrams per 100 kcal. The new concentration is 24 milligrams per 100 kcal. To put that in perspective, I had to print these out. So Similax formulas all have between 4.5 and 4.9 milligrams of inositol. So much less per 100 calories, but that's, you know, what the minimum that the FDA has set is four, so it's well above the minimum. And then Gerber's, all Gerber's formulas have six milligrams, so the same as all of Enfamil's original formulas. I'm sure you want me to say, well, so is it better? <laughs> and uh, my answer is, I have no idea. <laughs> uh, I, I don't, so we're moving now from research to my personal perspective. So that was all just research and numbers. Um, my personal perspective is I think I would consider inositol not necessarily one of those sexy ingredients like lutein because lutein is not required. It's required. So it's important that it's in there for baby's health. But, you know, four versus six versus 24. I did not spend a ton of time researching this because I had the kids with me today. But I haven't found any research to suggest that way more would be better. Um, yeah, so it's not an it's not an ingredient that would make or break my decision. I'll go back to my usual stand home stand home standalone take homes is that the macronutrient source of the formula. So where's the protein coming from? What fats are involved? Where's the carbohydrate coming from? Those are much more important to me than the concentration of inositol, since all formulas are going to have to meet this bare minimum. So. That's what I'm going to say. The other nice thing about that is that if you're feeding if you're feeding one of the infant, infant gentlies or newborn, and all of a sudden, like I don't know if they're going to phase these out, if they suddenly only have premium available, I bet your baby's going to transition with no issues whatsoever. Um, there's always there's always the random sensitive baby who is sensitive to these very technically benign ingredients, um, but in general, I don't think your baby would. Um, notice the difference between the standard and the premium, which is great news because um, your store now has to choose how much of each of these to carry, and they'll probably switch over to carrying mostly the premium. That's usually what happens when a formula releases a new label. So that's the good news. And they seem to be similarly priced, at least on Amazon, which is where I do all my shopping. <laughs> Lastly, I want to make a quick point about DHA for two reasons. Anositol kind of reminds me of DHA in terms of um, formulas in that it's one of those things that gets a lot of marketing attention that we 
don't 100% understand what the best amount is and your body's capable of making it. So very similar to inositol. DHA is not a required fatty acid because your body is capable of making it. We add it to formula because there's a lot in breast milk, just like inositol, and also because we think that maybe when babies are growing so fast when they're little, their needs for DHA might be higher than their body can keep up. But babies who are fed formula without DHA grow just fine, and there's been a lot of studies suggesting that adding it to formula doesn't really improve long-term outcomes. So inositol kind of reminds me of DHA in that way, but there doesn't seem to be any harm to adding it in, you know, 24 milligrams per 100 calories. So I'm totally fine with that. The other reason I wanted to bring up DHA is if you go to Infamil's website on their new, you know, you'll see it right away, their new premium formulas have this big marketing campaign about inositol now with concentrations more similar to breast milk than any other formula. Well, I just gave you all the nerd background about like, why well, that may or may not matter. And then two, they go on and on, on and on, I'm exaggerating, I'm prone to that. They make a really big point about how their premium formulas have more DHA and they don't come out and say it, but to me, it kind of implied that this formula had more DHA than some of their other formulas, which actually would be, a, I would really want to know that. It does not. All of them most formulas still have the exact same amount of DHA as the original version. It's 17 milligrams of DHA, 34 milligrams of ARA, which is arachidonic acid. Um, these are lovely. Those are great concentrations. That's within the range of what's in breast milk. Very safe. That's great. That is slightly different than Similac and Gerber. Every formula company is taking a slightly different approach. So that's what Enfamil is getting at. So again, I'll repeat these so you have all the numbers. Enfamil's formulas have 17 milligrams of DHA, 34 milligrams of ARA. I have to look at my numbers here. Similac's formulas have five milligrams of DHA. So that's where they are getting the statistic that they have way more than other formulas. And 22 milligrams of ARA. So they do have slightly less. And then Gerber's formulas have 17 milligrams of DHA, which is the same as Enfamil's, but also 17 milligrams of ARA. So they have the same of both. So like I said, every formula company is taking a little bit of a different approach. And DHA and ARA are similar to inositol in that it's really hard to look at breast milk and be like, oh, that's the perfect concentration, so that's what we're going to give to formula-fed babies, because the range in breast milk is enormous. Japanese moms who eat fish every day have like sky-high concentrations of DHA. Women in you know, Denver who never eat fish and are landlocked and don't supplement will have way lower concentrations, and all those babies grow perfectly fine. So it's really hard to say exactly what is the perfect amount. Um, and then that's why I don't like kind of some of the scary marketing, like our formula has more um, than other companies and is closer to breast milk. Well, closer to whose breast milk? It's so hard to tell. So my take home is that all these formulas are perfectly safe. And if you're feeding one, don't let this new formula make you feel like, oh my God, I need to switch because this is closer to breast milk. Um, it's, I'm sure it's closer to one woman's breast milk, but it's just so hard to know. And I always say, if your baby is thriving, you are feeding the perfect formula. There's no need to start to panic because new marketing messages come out because they're just going to keep on coming. So I'm sure we'll hear more. I, ju I mean, I just saw these new labels online because I'm on these websites almost every day. So um, I'm sure you'll see them in your store if you haven't already. And if one of your girlfriends asks, you can refer them to this video that it's really just the inositol that has changed. And the DHA and ARA has not changed, but is different from other formula companies, but it's always been different. So I hope that is helpful. I hope that's a little soothing. I hope you um, information junkies out there liked the tiny biology lesson about inositol in the beginning. And if you have any questions about formulas or you're, that you're considering or if your baby's having a hard time adjusting to a new formula or finding one that works, I know how painful that is. Um, and I would love to help. So you can sign up to set up a free call with me right on Facebook. You can click book now and it will take you to my calendar. And of course, you can also get there through my website, babyformulaexpert.com. And if you have any other questions or find any new information about Enfamil's new labels, I haven't seen any press release or official information, please send it my way um, or leave a question in the comments and I will get to it after bedtime. <laughs> I hope you guys have a wonderful week and I'll see you next week.
Bye.